Okay. Roll call. Call the meeting to order. Roll call. Chairperson Patricia Barton, present. Commissioner Miguel Funes, present. Commissioner Margaret Phelps, absent. Attorney James Lamana, present. And Captain Chris Kelly, present. Okay, so we do have a report. All right, let me have minutes from our August 20th meeting. No, I'm sorry, from our, yeah. No, so September. 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 Yeah. September. I'm looking at the minutes, that's why. <laughs> I did uh, make the meeting, the minutes, and I do make a motion that we accept those already. Oh, second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. And we have uh, some one day liquor licenses, uh, North Shore Latino Business Association for October 16th from 6 to 8.30 for a fundraiser. Another one from the North Shore Latino Business Association for November 7th and November 13th, uh, again for a fundraiser, 6 to 8.30. And the last one from um, the National Latino Business Association for December 4th from 6 to 7.45 for a fundraiser, meeting fundraiser. Then we have um, legal collaborations. They're hosting a fashion show at the Lynn Museum on November 2nd from 6 to 10 p.m. New American Association of Massachusetts, 330 Linway, Suite 302. They're hosting a fundraiser at the Lynn Museum from 6.30 to 9.30. The Lynn Museum, 590 Washington Street, um, October 26th from 6 to 10 p.m. for a birthday party. And the uh, Cultura Latina Dance Academy, um, 25 Exchange Street on November 23rd from 4 to 9 p.m. for a birthday party. And lastly, uh, Cultura Latina Dance Academy, 25 Exchange Street on December 8th from 5 to 9 p.m. for a Christmas party fundraiser. It is your pleasure. Make a motion that we accept the um one day licenses and for those uh, if the fees to be waived if they are having some uh, fundraising for the non-profit non i'll second that motion all in favor all right okay all right and then we have a change of manager uh william p connery jr kevin hicks hi Hi. Yeah. Yes, Kevin? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hey. And you've been a bad manager before in the past? I was, I've been the bad manager, more or less, at the point. <laughs> the current bad manager's health has not been good. Oh. So I've been running it pretty much. Okay. Also last year. Good. Anybody else have any questions? I don't. Then I can entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve um, the new manager at the post six. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Right. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay, and then uh, next on the agenda, we have um, two applicants for a beer and wine, wine and malt retail beverage license. As soon as they are ready, we will. Um, before we before I turn this up to, for a public hearing, I just want to um, let it be known that as of this particular moment in time, we do not have a beer and wine license being appealed to the ABCC. 
So until we get a, a ruling one way or another, we wouldn't be issuing any any license. Um, we can have the hearing with the understanding that no decision will be made until we get a um, ruling from the ABCC regarding the appeal. Uh, should I sue from the ABCC? There was one virtual license that sent me a communication that said there's one available. And then I also had the question of the one of the seals. Oh, so yeah, well, I think there is one beer and wine license that is, is currently available. Lindmark had applied and was denied by this board. They appealed to the ABCC. So if anyone was granted today, they were first in time. Yet the ABCC overruled this, the, 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 board, the board's decision. Uh, the successful applicant would have to turn the license in. Um, and that, uh, that's presupposing someone is granted this evening. Uh, but there, there is one that was filed before the end and is, is on appeal at this time. Any qualification is for something. She just made no, but, right. exactly. Okay. So, so I'm just saying that I'm just letting you know up front that no decision will be made tonight. But we can, I can go ahead with the hearing if everyone's in agreement to that. Sure. All right. Then, um, we call the public hearing to order. And um, I just want to make one other thing perfectly clear. Um, each party will be able to state their case. And if anybody is here to support that petition, they will be able to speak without being interrupted. And if anybody is here to oppose the granting of the license, they too will be given the opportunity to speak and we won't. We will not tolerate any comments outside of what you have to say. Okay. First, then um, we have the Central Market doing business as Central Market. Hello. Attorney Tyler Hensler here representing La Central Market uh, at 107 Washington Street in Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, as Chairperson Barton said, here applying for a new beer and, white, uh, beer and wine package store license. Uh, joining me is the owner, Prakesh Patel, and the proposed manager of record, uh, Mungta Ben Patel. Uh, Central Market has been owned by Prakesh Patel for six years, and during this six year period, uh, they've offered tobacco. Uh, and lottery to customers without a violation. Uh, so they're looking to add beer and wine licenses uh, or license to the store as an amenity to the grocery, food, and other products that they, they currently offer to customers. Uh, as a public need for a license at this location, we point to the many customer requests that they have had over the years for beer and wine. Um, I'll add that the character and fitness of this applicant is strong as Prakesh Patel owns another store with a beer and wine license in Lynn. Uh, the deep DT market, um, and he has done so for two years without violation, uh, without issue. Uh, so he's an experienced operator uh, that's already disclosed and approved by the ABCC and the sport. Um, as mentioned before, they also offer lottery and tobacco, uh, so they are uh, in the practice of checking IDs and making sure that uh, only uh, persons of age can purchase uh, certain items. So they, uh, we think that the transition to checking IDs uh, for alcohol will uh, be very smooth. Um, as Prakash is the manager of record at the other store, the DMT, uh, his wife, Mamta Ben Patel, right here, uh, will be the manager of record here at uh, La Central. She is a U.S. citizen. She is a Massachusetts resident. She's familiar with the rules and regulations related to the sale and service of alcohol of this commission, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and she has experience in the industry as she has worked uh, and helped. Uh, for cash at the DT market uh, for the two years that they've had alcohol. Um, I understand that any any decision or lack thereof here today is pending, uh, you know, activity at the ABCC, but we, we really appreciate the commission's uh, consideration of our application uh, and we're looking forward to working with the commission uh, going forward to, to this end. So thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you. This is a bit of housekeeping. Uh, the applicant has required to send certified mailings to uh, neighbors. W was that done? Yeah. Yeah, just for the file. I, I, I personally can't speak. I was retained as counsel uh, earlier this morning, but uh, I, I am t I've been told that a butter's notifications have been sent. Great. If you could provide the, the certified green cards. The gr you have the green slips that would come back to the file. I You can probably talk tomorrow. This, this may have been sent by first class meeting, we're not certified. We, we can handle it. Yeah, I, I, we, we'll, we'll supplement. Thank you. Yep. Anybody on the board have any questions? For? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of um, the application from La Central Market? Uh, hearing none, is there anyone here in opposition to this application? Good afternoon, uh, for the record, Attorney David Lusbrantz, 16 Andrew Street, Lynn Mass. I'm here on behalf of the uh, BNM market, which is located at Lloyd and Washington Street, uh, one tenth of a mile from Mr. and Mrs. Patel. What was the name of it? BNM uh, market. BNM. It's right at the corner of uh, Lloyd and uh, Washington. Also here on behalf of, uh, it's one tenth of a mile away from uh, the central. Um, I'm also here on behalf of Henry's, which is down at Lawton and Henry Avenue, one block away from um, this proposed uh, site. Uh, they sell beer and wine also. Um, there's se several deficiencies I'll be as quick as I can here. First of all, the applicant did not get council permission, but that is not when you need council permission, a uh, special permit, which they did not get, uh, as far as I researched and tell. Uh, and I stand corrected, city solicitor. They have not, so there would be no way that uh, they could open without approval of this board, rules from the ABCC, and a special permit from the city council. Okay. Uh, The total square footage, looking at the public records they submitted, is 1,197 square feet. Uh, and that's to hold everything, um, which doesn't hold much. Uh, yeah, it's 18 and changed by uh, 66, I think, and changed. But the uh, biggest question that you folks have is the public need whether there's a need for it. And there's a case uh, that I just want to quote a little bit of that I found. It's Dungan versus Wolven. It's an appellate court case. Um, Silver Law, the SJC, uh, cites it uh, in uh, different uh, cases they take up on this uh, question. And uh, briefly, the provisions for the issue of licenses and permits under Chapter 138 imply no intention to create rights generally, but are exacted with a view only to serve the public needs and in such a manner as to protect the common good. And to that end, to provide in the opinion of the local board an adequate number of places at which the public may obtain uh, beverages. So I would suggest to the board uh, there will be a business hit, first of all, for my clients, uh, and then there isn't a public need. I don't think they've shown a, a public need of being that close. Now, I wish them well. I'm sure they're hardworking folks, but um, that particular part of it, uh, I just don't think they've uh, shown a case for public need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just kind of uh, just a brief opportunity to rebut some of those comments. Um, starting with the deficiencies, uh, seeking council permission for the special permit, uh, is it possible to be approved today pending uh, approval of the, uh, I, I know we won't be approved today due to the issue at the ABCC, but is it uh, the practice of this board sometimes to uh, approve here, wait for it to go to the ABCC and allow the applicant time to uh, request the special permit from the city council. Yes, that has happened in the past, but I believe I do I 
do believe that I made it perfectly clear that no decision would be made today. A absolutely. Okay. Um, as for the uh, 1,100 odd square feet uh, cited, we applied for 2,000 square feet in our um, application, first of all, because that includes storage in the, uh, the lower level of the building, I believe. Um, however, uh, he, uh, my, my brother is, is right. Uh, this is a small store, uh, and as such, the, the sale of beer and wine would take up a very small uh, location. I don't have the floor plan in front of me, I apologize, but I, I believe uh, the commission does. And uh, the shelving provided for the beer and wine, it, it does not take up the whole uh, floor space. It would be one or two shelves, uh, again, as an amenity to the, the groceries and uh, other products that they already sell. Um, and finally, uh, as uh, the attorney uh, said in some case law, um, I practice uh, liquor licensing in the state of Massachusetts. I'm very familiar with what's called the Ballarin factors, as the, I'm sure the commission is as well. Um, the Ballarin factors are the factors that the board uh, or a local licensing authority can take into consideration when considering uh, public need, character, and fitness of, of an applicant uh, for a liquor license. Um, those include proximity to other other locations, as, as the attorney stated. Uh, but one of one of the, which that is not a, a Ballarin factor is uh, pure competition. Um, so the the other liquor stores that have hired an attorney, uh, I've seen it before. Um, I've, I've, I've been in, in his position before. I've been hired by other liquor stores before to do just this. Um, and honestly, it is a uh, clearly a, a motivated by competition, um, fear of competition in the marketplace, which is specifically not a Ballarin factor. So I'd ask the commission uh, to keep that in mind. Um, and also, finally, the Ballarin factors, though uh, 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 laid out, you know, there's seven or eight of them. I won't go through them here. Uh, but it's with the caveat that heavy discretion is given to the local licensing authority, which would be this commission. Uh, so if you think the applicant is is uh, fit to, to have a beer and wine license or a, a li any other liquor license, um, and, and they meet uh, your qualifications, the ABCC gives heavy deference to your, uh, to your decision, uh, which is the reason that the ABCC is, 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 you know, they have to do this appeal, but they'll probably uh, listen to your decision in, in that original case. Um, but again, heavy discretion to the board. So if uh, you deny our application, uh, please, we ask you to do so, uh, uh, you know, based on the merits of our application and not because of the uh, fear of competition by the other licensees uh, in the city. But thank you. Can I follow up? Yes, sure. mm -hmm. The gist of my presentation was not the competition uh, council. I like your score. Uh, it, it's not the competition uh, question. It's uh, the public need question. And that close with uh, everything that's going on in this city that I was born and brought up in, uh, with respect to alcohol and other factors, I think the board has uh, a real obligation to take a look at these uh, uh, beer and wine licenses but if you that close in proximity, we shouldn't have it everywhere around the city. Uh, and that's, that was the, the gist of it, not uh, so much as the uh, uh, competitions my brother uh, mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments regarding the application for the center? Okay, then close that one. And we'll open the public hearing for <coughs> Yeah, well, Tiba. 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 Right. Uh, it's a large store that's been in business for over 20 years. Uh, they uh, serve the public with uh, WIC, SNAP, and those programs. They don't have a lottery. Uh, it's, as I say, it's a large facility. They've been in business here in the city for over 20 years at that site. They also own a restaurant uh, like far from here on Franklin Street. Um, and they seek uh, the available uh, uh, beer and wine uh, license. As I say, it's a family operation. Um, 
the restaurant is running with one brother, the store is running with another brother, and Leanne just sort of runs the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, and we propose to have Lyons, the uh, manager, he'd be trip certified. I explained that to him. Uh, and I think the track record at the store has been a, a good one. And I think it, in terms of what this last discussion was about, um, if you're familiar with that area and that side of the common, uh, they'd be the only one really, uh, they're, they're the largest convenience store, they're the only convenience store, I think, uh, from Market Square all the way. Uh, up until Market Street, uh, and as I say, I think they have an adequate facility. I think they have a proven uh, business record, and uh, as far as in, in terms of the uh, way they operate, this is going to be like they run their other businesses, hands on, uh, with all family members. Uh, you're glad to answer any questions. I say one's not that good in English, but I know hey, people here are better than me, and he and they can interpret if there are questions. Mm -hmm. Same question for housekeeping. Did, did you have certified uh, letters sent out to the neighbors? Excuse me, yes. I, I brought the, the uh, green cards and the, uh, I got all back but one. And I brought the, uh, the slips as well, and Laura Lee has copies. I have the originals, but mm -hmm. she has the copies. Uh, there was only, uh, St. Stephen's Church was the church. I notified St. Stephen's. And, and, and the voting property. Okay. Yeah. And I looked to see if the Fecto Leary, but it was more than 500 feet. Yeah. I'll explain that you said they were coming in as you. I mean, okay. So yes. okay. I'll explain. Okay. And I have any questions on the paper if I look at more than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I think we're all set. Anybody here in um anybody here in favor to speak for this applicant? Is there anyone here to oppose it? Okay, and then I will close the public here and just again no decision will be made today, so, okay, so, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, well, next on the agenda, we do have a conference for populists that they have asked for a contingent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I'm going to table that at this time. Sure. Okay. Um, then we just have our police reports. Why a month this month compared okay. to last? We almost made it, too. I know. I just got them, guys. Uh, the first one we'll read is incident report number 24063024, dated 9-14-2024, um, 26 hours from 44 State Street. When police were dispatched to 44 State Street, which is State Street Liquors, on a report of a trespasser. Police arrived. They found out the um, person trespassing had already left. They were able to identify that person and... Um, that person will no longer be allowed on the premises if she shows back up again. The next one we have is incident report number 24063090, dated 9-14-2024, 2202 hours, 854 Western Avenue. Lynn police were dis uh, dispatched to 854 Western Avenue, uh, which is Brino's Bar, for a portal of loud music. The officer writing the report noted that while they were um, exiting the cruiser, they couldn't hear loud music coming from inside the bar, Bruno's. They went inside, they met with um, a Mr. Aguilar, who stated that um, that she was the owner, I'm sorry, a female, she was the owner, and that someone had complained about the music being too loud. She went on to say that there was new tenants that moved in. The officer um, explained that he didn't know who the caller was, but it still had to be lowered. She agreed, told the DJ to do so, and the music was eventually turned down. Uh, 
The next one we have is two reports for the same incident. Uh, one's a supplemental report, but it's incident report number 2406-431, dated 9-28-2024, 106 Union Street, um, at 0034 hours, so um, 1234 in the morning. Uh, police were dispatched to 106 Union Street, which is a Stefani's restaurant for report of a disturbance. The uh, notes that were given to the officer uh, stated that a male alt and black jacket threatened a female sitting, uh, stating that he had a gun. Several um, units were dispatched due to the severity of the call with someone possibly armed with a handgun. Uh, when the officers arrived on scene, they did see some men fitting the description. Uh, one was stopped up in the area of Joy Street, the parking lot at 42 Joy Street. And I'll get back to that gentleman in a second. Mm -hmm. But they went on to the location. They spoke to a group that was the uh, people that were threatened, uh, specifically two females who stated that, that um, a, dr a man that appeared to be intoxicated sat down, um, invited himself to sit with their group. She stated that the friends told this man um, to leave several times. He would say sorry, he would leave briefly, come right back again, causing the group um, sort of the issues. They also said that this person was being rude and disrespectful. And in the female's words, she felt the security was not doing anything about this guy's behavior, who started becoming crazy and started making threats. One of the direct threats that he said was, I'll see you outside, I got the strap on me. Um, strap is a modern slang word for gun. She was obviously f frightened that he met, made this reference. Another direct quote was, I'm from Chicago. You don't know, I have the strap on me right now. Um, while he was making this verbal threat, he was also pointing to his waistband where guns are often kept. Um, these people obviously felt threatened and called the police. Uh, they gave a very descriptive um, description of this man right down to a Band-Aid on his hand where they said he was denied entry to a different club earlier. He had a nose ring and some other uh, very distinctive things. That was the man that was stopped up on Robinson, um, sorry, 42 Joy Street. The police took one of the females up to do a show up. Immediately upon seeing him, she said she was a thousand percent, thousand percent sure it was him. And uh, it's a lengthy report discussing the um, the rude behavior of the person stopped and some of the stuff that he was saying. But basically, um, at this point, he will be charged with threats to make, commit a crime with assault with a dangerous weapon, which was a firearm. In the second report, which is the same report, number 2406-6431, it's dash two. It's the supplement report just um, documenting the use of force officers had to draw out their weapons at the low ready due to the um, people being stopped, possibly having a gun at that time. And they weren't even arrested? <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, no gun was recovered yeah. during the search, and uh, threats to commit a crime is not an arrestable offense. Wow. Uh -huh. well, yeah. <laughs> How about Chicago? He mentioned Chicago. Uh, What's that? He, he, did throw, he did throw Chicago in there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he'll, he'll be um, charged with those charges okay. based on that those statements. All right. Accept that for the file. And same thing with Bruno's, we'll accept for the file, then they get called back in for something. Okay. And one last one we have incident report number 2406. 6432. This is dated 9 28 2024 at 0038 hours, 130 Union Street. Um, the police were dispatched to 130 Union Street. This was um, a medical inside a provincial lounge. Uh, what happened here were two females were hit in the head by a spotlight fixture that was inside of the restaurant. It fell from the ceiling, uh, which is described to be about 20 feet. Um, there were injuries noted by the officer, visible uh, round bump on her head, significant on the side of her head, and both of them were transported to Salem Hospital for further medical treatment um, due to the light falling on their head. Oh, they can they have liability insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll accept that for the file. Thank you. You're welcome. You go off easy this morning. Yes, very easy. <laughs> okay. And then um, in business, we have um, three boarding house renewals. 
Pinkham Apartments. Laurie. Jay Palace. He's not ready yet. Okay, not yet. One more. Yeah, one, more. Okay. one more. And 166 Washington Street. Bridgewell, Bridgewell, and Bridgewell. Well, yeah. Any yeah. questions? Any comments? Any concerns? I guess we just approve them. Anything's been loaded? Yeah. Is this just, just for edification? I think we need the vote on this. We need to know that they've been approved by the board. We need to know that they everything's in order for all this? Yes. Okay. okay. We're making a uh, motion to approve um, an application for a lodging house license for 75 Silsby Street, 166 Washington Street, and 534 Essex Street, all properties owned by Bridgewell. Okay. I'll second all. All in favor. Aye. Aye. That's good. And then um, I just need a quick motion uh, to change our December meeting from Tuesday, December 17th to Thursday, December 12th. That's fine with me. Yes. yes. Yep. All right. So, you get a motion to do so? Yep. Motion to. Uh, Change the day of the December meeting from the 17th to December 12th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then, oh, business. But I was. <laughs> so I've been right. <laughs> so right. Table in back. <clears throat> they are looking to extend their entertainment license. Yes. But you wanted it till 10, 11? So last time I was here, mm -hmm. um, you guys granted me till 11 p.m. Right. And I thought it was fine. And so what I, happened, I put together an event. I had a salsa artist come dance, and it went by fine. And then 11 o'clock came, literally my whole restaurant cleared up. And I was like, wow, that's weird. Where's everyone going? And I, I look outside, everyone's walking to bars all near me, you know, literally walking distance. And I was like, wow, I went to another bar, okay. And then, you know, I did my research and I find out these bars next to me, they all have Latin to take till one. And I was like, okay, I get it. They, they don't want to be here. They want to go to a bar that has the entertainment. They're all walking distance from me. And I wouldn't be able to retain my guests and keep them. Mm -hmm. And oh, more food, more alcohol, you know, of course, more responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I want to retain the guests. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to go to another business, you know? And that's why I'm here. Okay. Okay. And, and, I, and I'm sorry to cut you yeah, off. I remember okay. last time, you know, mm -hmm. one of the reasons you told me it was, um, you were like, you know, I don't want disturbed his neighbor complaint, and I totally understand. Uh, but you know, I want to highlight we've been open for more than a year now. I've never had no complaint at all, no police incident, and I really want to keep it that way. I'm gonna try my best, and yeah, and okay. I would appreciate if I can get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, how many days a week are you looking to keep it open until 1 a.m.? That's the thing. I, I don't know when I'll be I'll have an event, but I'm open every day till 1 a.m. I have music going every day to 1 a.m. Um, I, like I said, I never got a plane, music playing too loud or anything. Uh, yes, I understand it's uh, a resident, a resident building right in front of us. We own the whole building. There's no one on top of us. I'm not going to get from people from top of me. And like I said, I, you know, we've been doing this for a year now. I've never had no incident. And I really would give the word city, Lynn. Uh, keep, keep it the way it is. Okay. But you're talking live entertainment, the live bands, right? Yeah, like, you know, a DJ, you know. I still have music playing every day till okay. 1 a.m., you know. But, but the only thing that's going to change is going to be a DJ. And you're going to have a DJ every day? No, no, no. Oh, oh, just no, no. Yeah, yeah, just like maybe like a Friday or Saturday. Oh, that's okay. about it. But no, no, okay. not a Monday, not a Tuesday. Okay. You know? Sunday night. I, I don't know. Yeah, I got to see what, what's going to work for me, to be honest. And that's why I'm here. You know, that didn't work. And I, if, if I got to come back again, I'll come back yeah. again. I just got to see what works for the business and what, you know, what, how can we can, you know, strive. Mm -hmm. You have music playing until 1 a.m.? I do. I do. How? They, How's they basically going to be out at 1 by 1. Oh, I mean, it's all, everyone's out by 1 a.m. Okay. Once, once 1250 comes, music off. But it's just regular to my like my TV, you know, like my Spotify going on. But it's on. But I've never received a complaint. I always keep it at a you know appropriate level, and I'm continue doing the same. Okay. If you allow me, I'm even open to 
to make the city more comfortable, even, you know, taking like a 60 day and 90 day, you know, like a test trial, just like I said, to make the city more comfortable, like, you know, okay. When you go on to one o'clock, some of their places, they do have patience because if they don't stop the music before like no. No. 12.30, 12.45, then they run into the issue of charging people. And when everybody comes, you know, to yeah. pay, they might run into a like, issue that yeah. the machine might go down or something. So pretty much, I'm, I'm sorry, how, how we operate, you know, 12.20 comes, that's the last time, that's, that's the last time someone can get in. You know, I have my cocktail, you know, mixed cocktails, 12, 12.20, a beer, a wine, 12.30. Uh, but I don't really know when to pass 12.20, to be honest. And I usually have, like, do my best to get everyone out of there 12.50. Okay. And yes, like, yeah, we do have music on. It's just, you know, we're cleaning, you know. No, you know we're putting things together again for your clothes up. But I usually have people out of there 12.50, 12.45. I turn off lights. Turn them up, shut my TVs off, music, one o'clock always, but lights always go up 12.30. Okay. What's the capacity in here? Um, 90. It says 76 on the episode. 76? All right. So I'm, uh, I was told with 90 included with staff, so maybe, maybe it is 76. You also sell food in it? Yes, sir. So how late will you be selling to me? Food. My kitchen closes at midnight. Your kitchen closes at midnight? Every day. So we had an entertainment license from 12 to 12. 12 to 11.30, Monday through, no, Sunday through Thursday? Thursday. And then had an entertainment license from 12 to 1, set Friday and Saturday. I'm open to that. Let me try it. You know, I'll test it out and see how it works. Yeah. yeah. I'm just really concerned. Course, you know. can, we do, can we do this? Can we try Thursdays also? Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Is Thursday a bigger night than Sunday? Sunday, 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 S
Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, and that's all right. I... Any other business? Hearing that? Meeting adjourned.